It's time for a big update on the Lee Loadmaster 5 Station Progressive Reloading Press. Gavin Yu here from UltimateReloader.com. I've already published a whole bunch of great content covering this press in action. In fact, my Loading 45 ACP with the Lee Loadmaster video has racked up well over a million views and I've shown pretty much everything from loading for semi-autos, revolvers, rifles, caliber changeovers, using the RCBS bullet feeder with this press, but there's a few things that I haven't shown yet and haven't addressed yet that I wanted to cover in this video. I wanna give you a bit more of a historical context in the story of this press. We're gonna cover an unboxing, which I haven't shown before. I'm gonna attach a UFO LM press light from KMS Squared, and we're gonna get this mounted to an inline fabrication ultra mount via quick change top plate. So let's get to it. The design and introduction of the Lee Loadmaster press came at a really strategic time frame in the history of Lee Precision. So Richard Lee started Lee Precision, and in 1992, he handed over the helm to his son, John Lee. In that same year, the Lee Loadmaster was introduced. And in that time frame, at that point in history, computer-aided design tools were still somewhat in their infancy. I remember learning to use AutoCAD back in, I think it was 1991. This was the first press Lee used CAD tools to design, but it was entirely designed in 2D, which is kind of hard to imagine in this day of prolific and in most cases free 3D design tools. And in the 28 years that the Lee Loadmaster has been in production, there have been really only a couple notable changes. First was the shell plates were redesigned based on different types of materials and machining processes that were available and to enhance indexing. The second was in 2012, the priming system had a minor redesign to handle corner cases where, for instance, you're loading 45 ACP, large primer pocket, and you encounter a piece of brass that's got a small primer pocket. With the original system, you could damage the priming system in that case. With the redesigned system, it alleviates that issue. So, quite a long time that this press has been in production, and it still remains the most affordable five-station progressive reloading press on the market. Let's get inside the box and see what's included. When you unbox the Lee Loadmaster, you'll find three compartments for contents. The main box contents, a pouch with the reloading dies inside, and an accessories box. Once you've got everything out of the box and laid out, you'll see what I see before me here. We've got the press assembly. This comes with the tool head installed and the shell plate pre-installed. This press is set up for nine millimeter, so that's what we're gonna be loading here. We also have a set of nine millimeter loading dies with the new Lee spline lock rings. It's got the lock ring wrench that you can use to tighten and loosen those spline lock rings. We've got the primer collator. This unfolds, you dump primers in, collate them to the appropriate orientation, insert it into the press, turn it on. We'll get more to that when we get into loading. This is the bench bracket for the completed cartridge bin. I will note that Lee sells their own stand. It's very rigid. It's kind of a pyramid design and they've also got cleats that mount on your bench. You're gonna to wanna to check those out as well. There is a primer blast shield. Now, Lee recommends using CCI or Remington primers and if you're not, this shield will protect you in the unlikely event that there is a primer detonation from a primer being crushed. We've got the case feeder parts. There's also a collator kind of bowl that sits on top that you can dump cases into and shake and fill the tubes with, but that's not included with the press. We've got the owner's manual and some other information there, the printed materials, the auto disc powder measure, the completed cartridge bin itself. That is what's in the box. It's pretty much everything you need to load a particular caliber minus your components like powder and primer, bullets and cases, and some of the common tools that you're gonna to need like digital calipers and so on and so forth. So I'm gonna get the press set up, mounted on my inline fabrication ultra mount. I'll walk through that process and then let's load some nine millimeter. So the installation of the Loadmaster on the inline fabrication ultra mount quick change plate is pretty straightforward. There's just three 
countersunk screws that come in through the bottom here. The one detail that's a little bit different for the load masters, that you've got an accessory bracket here that uses one of the mounting bolts to keep it in place and the factory Lee bracket bolts to that. That's gonna give us a place for our completed cartridge bin to hang. And then we just drop that down, use our two wing nuts to secure it to the ultra mount. And at this point, we're ready for the rest of the press assembly. We start the assembly process by optionally installing the explosion shield. If you're not using Remington or CCI primers, Lee recommends that you put this in place. There's already two screws here on the right-hand side of the press. We're just gonna remove those and reinstall them through the holes on the explosion shield. I'm using Remington primers for this nine millimeter loading session, so I'm not gonna worry about that. Then we shift our attention to the first stages of the installation of the case feed components. There is a slider block here that slides on what's called the tongue, part of the press frame. And you're gonna use a drop or two of motor oil on the bottom to provide that with a little bit of lubrication. Then we've got the feed rod and the crank slider. And the easiest way to install these components is to lower the crank slider into pretty much the lowest position put the connector rod through the rear hole on the feed block, and then push this feed rod down into the bracket and tighten the bolt. You can use a pencil to ensure that you have about 5 16 clearance between this feed rod and the tongue on the press. That's gonna ensure that everything is installed correctly, aligned correctly, correct clearance and dimensions. Then it's time to run a case through the press. And there's a couple things we're looking for here. We're gonna make sure that our inserter is inserting with enough push. We're gonna make sure that each of the case retainers at each of the stages are applying the appropriate inward pressure to retain those cases. And what you wanna do is push those in with the screwdriver so that they're too far in, basically touching the shell plate, and then run a case all the way through, and that's gonna push those retainers out to where they just have the appropriate amount of tension. Then when the case has gone through all of the stations, the ejector should eject the shell casing into the completed cartridge bin. Now we can enter the next steps of setup. Next, we take on die setup. And the dies I'm using here are the three that came with the Loadmaster press kit, plus a separate 44 mag Sizer D primer. Why, you ask? because Lee actually recommends for optimal priming alignment, priming happens in station number two, for you to run the Sizer D primer for the cartridge you're loading, nine millimeter in this case, with the decapping rod removed in station number two, so that you're sizing while you're priming, that all happens at the top of the stroke, perfectly aligning the priming setup with the shell casing. So instead of using a universal decapping die in station number one, I'm using this 44 mag die, which serves the same purpose. The sizing area is oversized. It's not gonna contact the shell casing. And the setup is the same for these two dies. You're gonna raise the ram to the top of the stroke, screw the die down until it hits the shell plate, and then lock in the lock ring. Then we've got the expanding and powder charging station. We're gonna screw the powder through expander die down until it hits the shell plate with the ram at the top of the stroke, and then back it off a full turn. Then it's time to assemble the Pro Autodisc powder measure. I went to the powder that I'm using, CFE pistol in this particular case. I looked at my charge, four grains in this particular case, and that gave me 0.3 cc's. You look through the discs that come with the Loadmaster kit. There is four total. And you look for the appropriate volume that you're looking for, spin it into place so that the actuation arm will fit into the slot, and then sandwich the components together. The hopper screws feed down through the base and there's two brass screws here that hold it all together. I'm gonna to validate that powder charge once I'm starting to run cases through. Now, with a case in station number three, we're gonna run that ram to the top of the stroke and see where our case mouth expansion is with the powder measure screwed in from the top and tightened down. If you don't have sufficient case mouth expansion, you're gonna look for around five thousandths of an inch. You can screw the entire die down, and if you've got too much, which will overwork the brass, you screw the die up. 
When you're satisfied, lock down the lock ring and make sure the powder measure is locked down as well. Then it's time to install the return chain and you're gonna attach the little bell on the end of the chain, run the spring down, run it up through the hole in the press frame and then feed it through this return arm and validate that at the bottom of the stroke you have just a little bit of tension. This is an important safety feature. The way this powder measure is designed, it won't double charge and that is super important when you're going to load. The last die to set up is the combo seating crimping die. What I like to use is a completed cartridge, maybe a reference cartridge that you've loaded previously. I pulled back the case retention arm with a flat blade screwdriver here in station number four so that I could insert the cartridge and remove it to measure it. We're gonna run the ram to the top of the stroke, crank the die down until we feel some resistance. I had backed out the seating plug ahead of time because we're gonna do that last. And then you're gonna want an additional about quarter or half turn to check for where your crimp is at. Then, with the ram at the top of the stroke, we're gonna run down the seating plug until we feel it contact the bullet and then give it just a very slight amount more. Now we can check both the crimp with a case gauge. I'm using a Wilson Tools and Gauges nine millimeter case gauge here, and then check for cartridge overall length and adjust bullet seating depth accordingly. What's nice about the Loadmaster is we do have an extra station here, station number five, where we could install a factory crimp die or other crimping die so that we can separate the bullet seating, do that first, and then do the bullet crimping, makes those adjustments independent of each other and a lot easier. Before going any further, I decided it would be a great time to install the UFO LM Press Light from KMS Squared. This install is very simple. You're gonna scuff all of the areas where adhesive will contact, follow that up with some rubbing alcohol. I used acetone, it's a little bit hotter solvent. Stick on the actual light strip. This has got a new split design, so it makes it easier to center and get it perfectly oriented around the bottom of the press frame here where the tool heads go in. And then there's three anchors for zip ties that help root that cord into the appropriate cord rooting position. There's an inline switch. Plug it into AC power and turn it on and we are set. Let there be light. Let's talk about the components I'm using for this loading session and the load that I'm working up. I am pretty excited about this shooting scenario. I've got a full size Glock. This is a Glock 17 with an Osprey 45 suppressor. The load I'm working up here is gonna be used for suppressed subsonic nine millimeter shots on steel at close range. And in order to attain that, I've got Barry's 147 grain plated round nose bullets. These are economical and 147 grain nine millimeter projectiles are typically subsonic by very nature. So this is gonna be perfect for this particular scenario. We've got the Remington five and a half small pistol primers and I'm using brand new Starline nine millimeter cases. These are top quality. They run great through progressive presses. They're made in the USA very affordable stuff, totally awesome. And what I found was, this is, this is so cool. I shot five shots through my Caldwell G2 chronograph with this setup, the Glock 17 and the Osprey 45. I had an average velocity of 958.4 feet per second and a standard deviation of 8.6 feet per second. That is an awesome load and it's a great validation of the consistency of this Pro Autodisc powder measure once things get settled in. I made sure I had about 30 charges through it after changing the auto disc. I changed from 0.3 to 0.32 cc's. That brought the charge weight up to about 4.2 grains. Use this low data at your own peril and your own risk. Always validate with multiple sources of manufacturers load data before you go ahead and use low data for yourself. I'm not responsible for your safety. Quick disclaimer there. Okay, having said that, let's run some cartridges through the press manually without the case feeder. We'll get comfortable with it, then we'll add the case feeder and we're gonna be pounding out the rounds like nobody's business. So I filled the flip tray with primers. This is the same exact process as I recently showed with the Lee Pro 1000. You can take the flip tray, open it up, dump in primers, shake them until they're oriented correctly, close the flip tray, turn it to the lock position, that's gonna keep primers from spilling, 
when you insert it into the primer feed chute, then turn it on, then tap it to load the primers down the chute. I also added CFE pistol to the powder measure. I set my charge, confirmed my charge, confirmed it again. So now we're ready to see how the press is gonna feed and to check the ammunition that we load just to make sure that we're ready for prime time. There we go, there's the powder measure. I'm gonna start adding a case at station number one, adding a bullet in station number four. It's a rhythm that we're gonna develop that's specific for each press that we run. And I'm gonna start slow. We're gonna work our way towards faster and faster loading as we gain confidence. Some people would say you shouldn't start with a progressive. I started with one. I think it's fine as long as you're somewhat mechanically inclined, you take your time. So it looks like things are running good. We're gonna wanna check our primer seating depth. We're gonna wanna check our cartridge overall length. We can double check our powder charge again, of course. Like I said, you can't be too vigilant with that. Last thing you want to do is load a whole bunch of ammunition with the powder charge off, or worse yet, have some sort of issue. All right, this means we're ready to install the case feeder. We've actually installed most of the case feed system. All that's left now is to install this feeder, this black multi-tube holder here called the feed plate and the drop tubes. And the process for this is really simple. We're gonna take apart the bolt and three nuts as shipped from the factory, run the bolt back down through. There's a little chart in the setup manual. It should come ready to go. There's different orientations on that feed plate for large cases and for small cases. Mine was set up ready to roll. We're then gonna raise the ram to the top of the stroke and insert a case right where the inserter would be ready to push it towards the shell plate at the bottom of the stroke. We're gonna place a coin on top of the case. That's gonna give us a little bit of an air gap when we remove the coin. And lower the feed plate down. There's one nut on either side of the boss on the press frame that's gonna hold it into the appropriate position. Then we install the drop tubes, each drop tube I just counted for nine millimeter holds 20 cases. So that's gonna give us 80 cases total each time we load up the feed tubes. And when they empty, we just rotate the next one into position. So that's just gonna take a few minutes and we've already done our press validation. So things should be smooth sailing from here. Let's do some full progressive case fed loading now. And this is where things really pick up. If you're used to loading single stage and get a press like this, you will be amazed at how much faster things go. So fast, in fact, you've got to keep an eye on your components. Powder, primers, there's little slats cut in the uh, primer trough there that allow you to see when the level's gone down, the flip tray is translucent. And we're also taking a look at those case feed tubes. Because we want to make sure we don't have an interruption for case feed either. Not that that would be the end of the world. <laughs> Okay, there's the last case. So now we're just gonna rotate a new one into position. Good to go.
Okay, I just saw that the primer flip tray ran out of primers, so I'm gonna load some more. So as you can see, with the Lee Loadmaster, we're able to crank out ammo like nobody's business. And as I mentioned, I've got a bunch of other videos on the channel and articles on ultimatereloader.com that cover just about every aspect about the Loadmaster that you'd want to know about. Pistol loading, rifle loading, caliber changeovers, and this summer, summer 2020, this press is going to be in the biggest, the baddest progressive press shootout you've ever seen. Just about every make and model, including the Loadmaster, including the Pro 1000. Also, as a little bit of a teaser, I've got the Pro 4000 kit coming up here on the channel. That's the Auto Breach Lock Pro in the kit form. So, here's what I want to know from you. Do you run a Loadmaster? Do you want to run a Loadmaster? Tell me about your experiences. Drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. Did you like this video? Please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget that first link in the video description links to a full article with a lot more information, detail, links to product pages. If you like this KMS squared light, there's gonna be a link in the video description. Also, I've got Ultimate Reloader shirts at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'm on Patreon. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not gonna to wanna to miss the Progressive Press shootout the poor Pro 4000 and all of the other great content that I've got coming up. Until next time, happy shooting and happy reloading.